What's up guys, Asian here again with another Math 101 lecture. This is probably going to be the last one for a little bit here. I'm going to go back to uh, make uh, updating the beginner guides uh, as well as the build basics videos uh, to kind of get them up to date uh, with the new changes that have been coming around since Dragonhold. Uh, so normalizing parses, why is this important or why should you know how to do this? Well, uh, normalizing parses basically allows you to more or less get what your theoretical DPS might have been if you had uh, good buff uptimes, good debuff uptimes, uh, and it also can account for lucky or unlucky crit chances. So for those of you guys who are theory crafters who test out a lot of different builds, Standardizing on a crit chance is actually something that you should try to do. Uh, now, obviously, one of the ways you can get around this is by just doing a bunch of different parses and then averaging all your parses together. But from a mathematical standpoint, it is possible to standardize your crit chance. So if you have a very unlucky parse with not a lot of crits, you can standardize it based on a couple of pieces of knowledge you already have on hand. So much like the other Math 101 videos, we are going to be using the ability metric. Uh, again, the uh, formula is right here. So we're, we're going to be using this to adjust for our buff uptimes, debuff uptimes, and crit chance. Uh, so we will be using the percentage difference modifier uh, change here. Uh, so again, to, to reiterate, percent change is final divided by initial minus one. This entire quantity times 100, and this will give us our overall percentage change. So. First, let's talk about standardizing on buffs. This isn't really very useful to know for your standard DPS, but it is a potentially important uh, important for raid leads to know how to do. So that way you can assess just how much additional damage you could actually get if you were to improve your overall buffs. So let's say you had a fill-in healer for a raid and their comet prayer was either higher or lower than your normal uh, healer. Your, your permanent healer. Uh, you might be interested in knowing how much higher or lower your DPS would have been if the other healer was there, so your full-time healer was there. Um, so this is not a situation that comes up very often, but for raid leads, this is something, again, that you might want to know how to do. So if you're shooting for anything like a speedrun achievement, you can know basically how much DPS you can expect if you had better uh, buff up times. So let's say uh, your normal healer that normally comes on your runs is sick that day, uh, and they normally get a minor berserk uptime of around 50% or so. Uh, then let's say that you bring in a new healer, and they have an a uptime of about 85% or so. So if we go ahead and do our percentage change difference, so we have our final, which would be our 85% uptime minor berserk, and our initial is the 50% uptime minor berserk, we're assuming that we have our minor slayer buff, so 0 0.05. Um, so we'd basically take the percentage change and we get 2.56% or so, 2.57%. So based on this, we can basically say that our parse should be adjusted upwards by 2.57% in order to get uh, what our parse actually is. So if our baseline parse, which is the parse we normally get when our healer is here, uh, was 70,000, then our new standardized parse would be 71,799. Uh, and the reverse is true as well. So you can basically see if your parse would have been lower uh, because uh, you may all uh, let's say uh, your new healer that came in is actually lower berserk uptime. You can say, okay, my parse was this, but it would be higher, and this is what it would be in theory if everything basically remained exactly the same. And conversely, you can say, okay, uh, we had a really good minor berserk uptime, but we normally don't have that, so my normal parse is this, uh, or I should say the parse I got was this. If I if we had our worst uptime, my parse would actually be a little bit lower, and here's what it would be. Very useful, again, for raid leads, not particularly useful for your standard DPS player, unless you're interested in knowing what your theoretical uh, DPS would have been if you had better buff or debuff uptimes. What's more important to know for your standard DPS player might be something known as standardizing on crit chance. Uh, so this basically helps combat what a lot of people call crit farming. Because crit chance is a chance, it's basically RNG, some people crit farm in order to get higher DPS. Basically, you're banking on the fact that uh, hopefully you can get some higher crits or more crits uh, on a one parse compared to another parse, and you can use that to submit it to, let's say, a raid lead who might be interested in knowing what your DPS is to see if you get a position on the team or if you just want to show off your parse, for example. You are able to standardize on crit chance and more or less control for that RNG factor on the amount of critical hits that you're getting. 
Um, so we will be using a parse that I have done in the past here. Uh, so this is the parse that we're using here. This is a two-handed uh, Nightblade parse. And we'll see in a little bit that this parse actually is a pretty bad example, but we'll still be using it as an example nonetheless because this is the only parse that I have saved up uh, on Imgur right now. That was recent. So the first thing that you have to do if your standard is going to crit chance, is you have to subtract out all the hits that can't be crits. This is basically, at this point in the game, pretty much only proc sets. So from that part, so if we go ahead and open this in a different tab here, you can see here that we are using Reliquin. So we'd have to take out the 327 hits that we have from Reliquin from our total and our normal. We also have to take out for Veladress. We got 27 hits from Veladress, so we have to take out the 27 again from total and your normal hits. So when we do that, we have 560 normal hits, 926 critical hits, and 1,486 total hits. Then you get your overall crit rate once you have adjusted for this. For magic DPS, you are going to have to subtract out your proc sets. Uh, but if you're running something like it doesn't have a proc, it doesn't do damage, then you can just take exactly what you get from combat metrics. So you will need to have combat metrics in order to use this method. So apologies, console users, you won't be able to use this method to kind of adjust your parse. Now, this 62.3% crit chance is actually what our mean crit chance was. So again, this is a really bad example because our calculated crit chance is actually equal to our mean crit chance. So for the sake of comparison, we'll say our max crit chance of 62.9 is our actual mean. So we have a little bit fewer crits uh, than what we normally would get. So basically what we want to do is we want to take the crit chance, our mean crit chance, so 62.9, and compare it to the crit chance that we got from this uh, formula up here, so 62.3. We do our percentage change and we see that if we had our 62.9 mean crit chance uh, again this is kind of a fake mean crit chance we would have about a 0.4 percent increase in our damage since we pulled 81 point uh, 81k 81,019 dps we would get 81,343 as a standardized parse so you can use this again to adjust upward or downward depending on how lucky or how unlucky you are with your crit chance so let's say uh, you managed to get only 55 percent crits you'd be able to standardize it and adjust your DPS parts upwards to adjust for the bad RNG you happen to get on that particular parse. So if somebody is showing you a parse and you notice that their crit hit rate is higher or lower than their actual mean crit chance on their comment report, you can use this formula here to figure out what their actual DPS would be. Uh, again, this is assuming that nothing else changes with the parse obviously in an actual parse in an actual raid environment things are going to change a lot you're going to be com uh, combating mechanics and things like that uh you might be resing people uh you might skip a light attack or so or uh, two you might find that your rotation is off a little bit so if everything was picture perfect exact carbon copy then this is the parse that you would see um, so not an exact science, but it is definitely useful for theory crafters to kind of see more or less what your actual parse would have been if you got unlucky or lucky when testing out builds. So standardizing parses, not particularly a common practice, usually reserved only for raid leads and heavy theory crafters, but it's an important skill nonetheless to have just because you might be able to get a better idea of where you actually stand compared to other people if you had better uh, buff or debuff up times. Good example of this uh, in one of my raiding groups uh, one of our yonder queen stacks typically speaking has lower berserk uptime compared to our other yonder queen stack so i'm able to use this method here to adjust my parse or other people's parses to see what they would actually pull if they were getting the 85 percent uptime uh, that we were that the other group is getting and what we find is that if our other healer was able to get that 85 percent minor berserk uptime we would definitely have at least another 15k dps or so so uh, as a raid lead that's very important information to know and it can kind of give you a little bit of insight as to what to prioritize when it comes to what damage uh, what buffs what debuffs you want to prioritize uh, so that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this informative. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section below. As always, with our Math 101 lectures, you will find links to the R Markdown and the HTML file or connected to that R Markdown file uh, uh, in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.